Can you yeah. tell us you, how you two become a women's doubles pair? Because I think you guys enjoy so much uh, your time together. So, so Setiana, can you tell us the story of Nine Gronya? Like how you two become a pair? We both. Um... to Bam and Talk show. Today we want to welcome a special guest as always. We have a four-time Oceania Women's Doubles Champion and Canada Open 2019 winner. So please welcome Satyana Mapasa and Gronya Somerville. Hi guys, how are you? Hi, good. Welcome Gronya, welcome Satyana. So uh, I see you guys are back to the court, back to the gym, working out. So how's the situation right now? I know you guys are in two different cities, but how, so what's the situation maybe in Melbourne and in Sydney? Um, yeah, Melbourne's okay right now. <laughs> We're getting the restrictions to ease like slowly. So yeah, back to gyms and stuff um, this week. And yeah, the case is not so bad. So <laughs> yeah. Good to hear. So I heard right now is the uh, the government will allow you guys to travel like what after September seventeen. Uh, I don't think an official date is released, but I think yeah. they're just starting with Australia, New Zealand travel first. So what happened then? Let's say the uh, you know we have the uh, the first two weeks like you know September. The tournament, are you guys allowed to travel or not? In that case, uh, we don't know. I don't think anybody really knows, especially like we don't know if when we get there we have to quarantine for 14 days and then when we leave and come back we have to quarantine for 14 days or or if there's even flights like going that often. Yeah, I think, yeah, more, most players are just training and not sure if they're going to compete or not. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's anyway. So I mean, the uh, uh, we've been talking to BWF. So uh, basically, I think whatever you have 14 days kind of tournament is not really workable. You know, it's very really tough, especially have a back to back, and then like, you know, it will be not easy. So uh, well, let's see what happening. So yeah, yeah. How about Satyana? How are you, Satyana? I'm good. Same with Tranya. We just back to training today and gym. Uh, last week. You are calling from Sydney, is it? Yeah, I'm from yeah, Sydney. How's the weather there today? Yeah, it's good. Today is really good. It's sunny and then it's good. It's winter, but it's not too cold here in Sydney. Is it? How, how cold is that? Like, in, of course, I heard growing up there is 3 degrees. How about in Sydney? Oh, I think in Sydney around 18 to 20, so it's nice. Ah, okay. So it's like busy about that. Yeah, so by the way, where is our your national center? Is that in Melbourne or Sydney? Sydney? Um, kind of Melbourne, but there's not really a national training center yeah. so much anymore. So how but are you yeah. guys are going to start training anyway? If you are, if you guys are in different like you know different city, I mean, when you guys you know getting together to train. Uh, we mainly just train together at tournaments or sometimes have like a little bit of uh -huh. a training camp before. But yeah, usually just training in our own cities. Wow. That's very tough though. And you guys managed to win anyway, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to win Canada Open just when sitting on his back from injury as well. So <laughs> maybe oh. the bigger the challenge, the better we do or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we also have uh, two fans, badminton fans, that are selected to attend this talk and uh, we'll talk directly to both Satyana and Gronya. Uh, say hello to Dafa and Faris. Uh, they will introduce themselves now. Uh, we start, let's start with Dafa. Hi Dafa. 
Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Dafa. I'm from Jakarta and I just finished my university. So I just got a bachelor degree recently. And I would like to say thank you to Badmin Talk for having me here today and allowing me to talk with two amazing athletes. Um, you know, it's an opportunity that does not come often. So I'm really thankful and I'd like to say thank you to Gronia and Katsatiana for taking your time also. Thanks. Well done on your degree. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And we also have Faris here. Uh, hello, Faris. Faris. Hello, Faris. Hello. God, the picture uh, looks so scary. Okay. Hi, Faris. Uh, boleh kenalan? Mungkin kenalan nama Faris. Yeah. Hello, Faris. <laughs> I think I think I'm, just, I think like, I'm like watching the uh, I'm just watching the like you know the the zombie movie the Black Summer I mean like you know the the third episode like you know I mean it's okay. <laughs> okay, we lost connection with Paris uh, and I think we will come back later. Yeah, so let's go back to our guest. Uh, so Grunya, how's your routine nowadays? Uh, you get fitter because more more time nowadays than your workout? Um, I don't know if I got fitter. It's kind of hard to tell without being able to play like full matches. And that's the easiest way for me to kind of judge how my fitness is going. But I think I did well just maintaining my level. Like I didn't go down too much because I was able to have access to gym and everything. And then I also started running, which I haven't been able to do in many years because when I do a lot of badminton training, then my feet get a bit tired and sore. So then I don't want to run on top of that. So yeah, it was a chance to do that, which was good. Well, I hope like, you know, you don't need like change your, uh, your career from badminton players to the, to the runner. <laughs> oh, no, that's not going to work with my times. <laughs> how about Tiana? How, how, how have you been spending your time recently? I know yeah. you like coffee. Is that, did you learn to make, you know, coffee art latte or something uh yeah i've been doing uh training and then also been doing a lot of coffee learn about tea food so yeah a lot of and, um, cooking and then yeah driving <laughs> so <laughs> finally gonna get her license finally yes <laughs> after so many years i guess yeah so how many of the uh, cups of coffees <laughs> diana Sorry? Every morning, how many cup of coffee? Like me, I need two anyway. Every morning, I need two coffee, minimum. I have like four to six a day. Four yeah, to four six? To wow. Six. I have coffee at home, like two to three, and then the rest I go to the cafe. Wow. Do you know in Indonesia, was the, uh, when was it? A couple months ago, right? They are so famous, the uh, making, uh, what do you call it? Dalcona or whatever. Dalcona or something like that. What is that name? Uh -huh. Yeah, like, you know, the very, very thick kind of coffee. The sweet one, yeah. Yeah. Did you remake it? Sadiana, no. Oh, uh, I tried one, but I don't really like it, so. <laughs> Same, I tried that because I really like it. Well, look at it. People like, you know, really spend a lot of time, like, what, I don't know, like, 30 minutes, I guess, to get one done. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you make it really thick, like, you know, I mean, oh, boy, it's not the way I'm doing my coffee. Yeah. Okay, so I think, I think we have got back from Faris now. Uh, the connection has got, has got back, so let's get back to introduction. Hi, Faris. Boleh dengar suaranya? Perkenalan. Tadi, maaf, nggak ada suaranya tadi. Oh, ya, nggak apa-apa. Ya, boleh kenalan namanya dan lain-lain. Ada pesan-pesan gitu. Halo, saya Faris, Faris Akbar, asal dari Jember. Kerjaan saya karyawan. Halo, setia nama Pasa, join Summer Field, Mas Kai, dan semuanya. Saya Faris, terima yeah. kasih. Yeah, so we have Faris Akbar from Indonesia. Uh, he's working full time now, and yeah, he's very happy to be able to talk to both Gronia and Stiana all the way to Australia. 
you know, yeah. I think Virginia was supposed to have four, eh? 40 uh, fans, but I guess I think the other two couldn't make it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'd like to know how's your training routine uh, between Ronya and Satya. I think it's very interesting to know that uh, we've got a uh, women's doubles pair from two different city. Yeah, so uh, can you tell us more about how your, how's your training routine, especially in this pandemic situation? Maybe starting from Satyana. Um, yeah. Um, and on, I mean, you mean like during this lockdown or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, pandemic situation. Depressing time. During yeah, depressing or, time. Or, yeah. or something or like any new routines you develop? Um, yeah, I start doing um, Pilates and then a lot of yoga. But still doing um, just a lot of exercise at the park. How about Gronya? Do you have any new things to try on the badminton training? Mm, not too much. I started to enjoy more the like the outdoor workouts. Yeah, like running I mentioned and skipping and um, yeah, still doing my weights and. I did a footwork session kind of like once a week. At the start, I did a more footwork and then I got a bit sick of it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not as fun as when you're on the court and hitting a shuttle. So, <laughs> yeah, but hopefully soon, yeah, back on court. So how much time of the day do you spend to, to train like uh, these days? Mm, probably at least two hours, two to three hours. I just, I have an Apple watch, so I just try to get a thousand calories on it every day. So that's usually like at least a one hour hard workout and then maybe like another hour of a less intense workout. Uh, okay, so yeah, we would like to, to know like how do you guys start playing badminton, the story, because like we know that in Australia, it's not like the number one spot. So yeah, can you tell us your story, Gronia? Um, for me, it was really just by chance. There was a talent identification program. So they were trying to mm. find the next um, female badminton star. And so they just were trying to um, get young girls to try out for this program. So they gave it to primary schools for girls that were like 10 to 12 years old who were sporty but didn't like necessarily know of badminton. And I just got given this sheet by my teacher and then I went to the day of testing and did like lots of jump tests and running and stuff like that. And then I got picked in the squad and then they started training us and I just fell in love with the sport and yeah, gradually got integrated into like the national junior squad and national squad and that kind of thing. Like uh, Sabrina, uh, tell us like uh, what happened in that time when you are, when you were part of the, uh, the uh, Indonesian team before, right? And then you moved to Australia, okay? You know, tell tell us the, the process. I mean, when did you really the time to move from the Indonesia to Australia? Um, yeah. Well, I used to play for Indonesia, and then um, I got injury when I play single, so I came to Australia for um, for the physio for the physio, and then um, for the for my injury, and then. I went back to Indo again, play doubles, and then the badminton Australia contact my family. So yeah, so I decided to move to Australia. How did you? But start? you live by your own, right? Or uh, you, uh, you know, your family with you, or what? I, I live with. At the start, I live with. Uh, I live with family here in Sydney, and then moved to Melbourne by myself. Oh. So. Okay. It, how did you actually start playing badminton? What gets you into it? In Indonesia? Yeah. Um, my dad played badminton at home. Uh, yeah, in Indonesia. Yeah, popular banget kan. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Semua orang, everyone's playing badminton in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, um, Gronya, I mean that, you know, you are so famous. Not Indonesia as well, but the uh, like in China and other country. So uh, tell us that we, I know, we heard that you have the uh, royal Chinese blood. <laughs> I mean, the uh, tell us more about that. I mean, is it from your grand grandmother or grand grandfather? I mean, 
Yeah, so I'm half Chinese and my dad was born in China and yeah. through his um, family side, I'm the fifth generation descendant of a famous Chinese revolutionist, like politician. Um, he was, yeah, he was just like a political reformist and really had a lot of new ideas for how China should be run around uh, the Qing dynasty time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he's just really famous and I'm related to him through, yeah, five generations. So what is your short name in Chinese? My Chinese name? My yeah. real Chinese name is Mai Lindan. Oh, Mai Ling Dan, Ling. <laughs> Ling, but, Ling. Yeah, yeah, not okay. Lin Dan, Ling okay. with a G. But, um, my Chinese teacher gave me a name that's like a bit similar to my English name, which is Kang Rongyang. Oh, Kang Rongyang. That's how you spell it, I mean, the, uh, the uh, Chinese. Sometimes, like, you know, I find it like, uh, kind of funny also, let's say, uh, like uh, they, they pronounce like Tao Fei Hidayat, like uh, Tao Fei or something like that, right? And then yeah. Hendra, Pantala. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they just try to make it sound similar, but with the Chinese um, words. But do you speak some oh, of them? Um, yeah, I've been learning it online for the last four years, so I can speak like basic Chinese. So you can the uh, you can the uh, probably uh, you know you know get some conversation with their with their Victor Axelson, I think. Yeah, but he's a lot better than me. <laughs> I, but we we have the same Chinese teacher. You'll get there. Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um. Not too long ago, I, I think this this was a good surprise when I visited Australia and see just how diverse the country is, um, and then especially for it being close to Asia as well. Um, so I was wondering, how popular is it? Uh, how popular badminton is actually in Australia, in your opinion, uh, Gronia? Um, it's it's not that popular. I mean, like. If you ask like majority of people on the street, they might have never really seen it or played it or might not even know what it is. Um, it's not that widely taught in schools or that kind of thing. And you don't see it in TV or on newspapers. So yeah, it's quite a small sport, but it is growing in participation and yeah, getting more people involved, more clubs are being built. So there's more places to play and that kind of thing. So hopefully it's just growing and getting bigger and bigger. Right, so were there a lot of challenges for you to get into professional level? in a sense? Um, because I kind of started through the pathway of that special program for um, young girls, I had a little bit of a easier pathway than others because it was had like that government funding and that kind of thing. But it's definitely a challenge for most Australian athletes in smaller sports to get funding. And like most are just paying, like their family is just paying for them to go to tournaments for all their training. So it comes at a high cost and then a lot of them yeah, we'll stop because of pursuing like university education and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of your education, you also got a, a degree in sports science. Am I correct? Nearly. I have one subject left and 140 hours of placement. So by the end of this year, hopefully you are correct. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> You're getting there. It's almost there. But yeah. did, you, did you pick the major because you're an athlete or is that something that you want to do since you know you're a kid or how's that um when i came out of school i knew that i wanted to like do something at uni just as like a backup for um sport but i couldn't imagine really sitting through like three years of any other subject besides something to do with sport so i just did that <laughs> and, and it, it's a good thing i enjoy it because it's like seven years later now <laughs> Is it, yeah. does it affect you as an athlete, as a badminton athlete? Is it applicable? Um, yeah, it's definitely like interesting. I would say like the sport helps with the degree more than the degree kind of helps with my sport. Like the science -y side isn't as applicable as an athlete, but it's interesting to know in general kind of, yeah. And obviously as a career, it's, you need to know a lot of it. Yeah, sure. yeah like uh, for Satyana, I mean the... Uh... When you guys, you and the uh, Gronia have been that time been invited by, by what is like uh, the Trans 7 or something, right? For the uh, talk show on TV. So how was it? I mean, the uh, the experience that you guys, you know, got into that. Hitam Puti. <laughs> oh, Hitam Puti, yeah. Black and white. 
Yeah, tell us about that too. That's the piano. We need you to tell us, Tiana, not to laugh at me. Kran? Cerita dong, cerita, cerita. Bahasa Indo aja ya, Ko? Oke, oke, fine. Seru sih. Pertamanya kaget gitu, cuman kayak, oh, seru juga. Dan nggak lama juga gitu. Jadi, agak pertamanya kita agak tegang, aduh nanti ditanya apa gitu. Tapi seru juga. Gronya, I mean the how about you? I mean the first time appeared in uh, in Hitam Puti. Yeah, it was definitely different. I'd never really been in a talk show that was like live, and they had the audience there, and yeah, those three hosts. It was like I'd been on one or two in Australia, but they don't have like the audience, and uh -huh. the Indonesian one they try to make it a lot funnier and like say a lot more jokes and teasing each other. So yeah, it was it was funny. All right, uh, so uh, we, we've got our badminton fan here. Uh, they would like to uh, send some questions. So say hello to Dafa. Hi, Dafa. Yeah, so hi, I have a question for uh, Kak Setiana. So you have represented both Indonesia and Australia. So I was just wondering what sort of differences are there between playing junior uh, in Indonesia and senior in Australia? whether it's culture, training program, or anything. So just curious about the differences, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just uh, very different, whereas in Indonesia, it's very famous, and semua orang tuh, um, apa-apa tuh ke badminton kasih perhatian banget, tapi di sini lebih kayak, uh, agak lebih relax, tapi juga um, kayak kita lebih mandiri aja sih. How about like, uh sponsorship is it difficult to find like support like in australia um yeah memang lebih spon sponsor gitu is a bit is a bit different uh, in compared to indonesia indonesia is a bit more easier because a lot of people play badminton all right so were there a lot of challenges when you first moved to Australia? You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe the language, maybe the style of the coaching, or were there a lot of challenges that you faced personally? Um, you have to yeah, eat when, rice, no pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I first moved to Australia, I really struggled especially with the uh, language because I didn't really study much uh, back in Indonesia. But yeah, the friend helped me and then I have to pick up uh, what they say. So I've been learning, uh, just learn from what people what people say because you know in Indonesia I'm at the club and yeah. we don't go to school. So yeah, it's it's I find really hard the first I think first one year, like the food, the culture, but yeah. There's still a lot of Indonesian food there, right? Or do you have to cook? So many. <laughs> I mean, you guys very lucky. I mean the. Uh... When that time was uh, many years ago, I guess, when the, uh, in New Zealand, because I went to school in the uh, Hamilton in Gisborne, I guess, uh, stay with family. I mean, it was not easy. Why? Because they get used, like, you know, eating salad. I'm not getting used to it. And then have pizza for dinner. Oh, come on. And, like, you know, I mean, not, not even enough. So, like, you know, I remember, like, you know, at the supper, I really have to sneak, sneak out to the uh, kitchen, have to cook some noodle because. It's not enough. You can you know you know you don't get used to it. I mean, it doesn't matter how many slices of pizza. You still you know feel hungry that time. <laughs> and I don't I remember. I didn't I didn't like any salad at all. Didn't like it at all. The beginning kind of eat. Hey, what is that? <laughs> but do you like gado gado? Yeah. Well, especially uh, what do you call it? The uh, oh my god, what's the name? The one that like kind of the smelly. What do you call it? The, the black one, they call that the, like a jam, not jam. Oh, what is Vegemite. that the one the, on, on the uh, oh. on the bread? What is that? Vegemite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vegemite. Oh, gosh, that's literally one of the worst. You know, my my landlord tried to force me to eat every morning. And I really, really didn't. <laughs> Do you like Vegemite now, T? Um, sometimes. 
I'm okay uh-huh. with crazy fries, but not like, oh, I can eat that every day now. At Only the start, do you think it was disgusting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you're, now you're becoming more Australian. The longer you stay, <laughs> the more you can eat a veggie mine. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea actually. I mean, that they're, they're in a kind of very enjoy it. I mean, yeah. uh, the one other thing I like about the, the, the food is that uh, Vijoa actually it was really good. It's like the, uh, you know, Indonesian, the uh, jambu, but actually it's different, but it's very soft. Mm. And then you can just pick up whatever you like on the street because it's free, because all the neighbors have it. So you just go and you just pick it up. <laughs> Yeah, so Satyana, uh, in retrospect, right, uh, do you actually regret or actually enjoy your decision to come to Australia after all this stuff? Um, I, I think I, I enjoy it. That at the start, is, it was very difficult for me, but I enjoy it uh, more and more. And then, um, um, yeah, I'm very happy in here in Australia. Yes, I still after badminton, but also I do um, a lot of stuff I can see um, like uh, outside. How about the support and facility? How do you compare between like last time your time in Indonesia? I think you have the Platnas, the national training camp, and now here in Australia. How is it different? Um, yeah, in here we don't stay in the door. So at, at the start, I was like, <laughs> I become very lazy because I used to train um, and then you just I wake up training and then now have to travel and then have to sometimes have to find another another court for extra training or something. Whereas in Indonesia you just wake up, oh training. But yeah. Um, and now it's okay. Now I get used to it. Are you still uh, get in touch with the uh, Indonesian players? Still get in touch. Masih ini. Yeah, some, Mas with whom? Some player with Gray here. Okay. Yeah. Because you guys from the same city, right, Manado? Yeah. And then I talk to Henry sometimes. To whom? Henry. Oh, um, okay. Uh, so uh, let's go to Gronya. Uh, so. Other than the women's doubles with Tiana, you also play mixed doubles with different partner in Australia. Uh, how different it is between like uh, the two disciplines, mixed doubles and the women's doubles? Um, yeah, it's, it's really different. Like it's a whole different tactic and yeah, it's it's a bit hard as well because it's different levels to the women's doubles. So sometimes I just play a tournament only women's doubles or another tournament only mixed doubles. So. Yeah, it made it a bit hard to try and fit all the tournaments in. Um, but yeah, I think it's nice to have another thing to focus on and not just focus on women's doubles sometimes, take a bit of the pressure off as well. So, any uh, dream partners? Mixed doubles. Pardon? Uh, so, which one do you prefer? Uh, do you enjoy women's more or mixed doubles more? Uh, I enjoy women's doubles more. What is that? Because Tiana is here. Uh, <laughs> she gotta say it <laughs> because I like to win more. <laughs> How about Satiana? I think you also play mix or mix several times, right? Uh, although not very regularly. So how does it compare to you? Um. Yeah. I I only play women's double now, so I enjoy play women's double more than mixed double. Women's double is like more control. <laughs> she gets so angry at the boy when she plays mixed yeah. double. <laughs> but she can't Always get as angry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Gronia, you, uh, can you yeah. tell us how you how you two become a women's doubles pair? Because I think you guys enjoy so much uh, your time together. So, so Satyana, can you tell us the story of behind Gronia? Like how you two become a pair? We both um, sama sama gila. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, Why, Gila? I know Gronya since um I know Gronya since junior, so that oh. time even I don't really speak English, but we when we see each other at the tournament, we always make fun, make joke, and then when we become a partner, it just I don't know, it just become it's just easy, so it's easy to connect, and then we both like 
um, other stuff than uh, badminton, like we go for cafe, uh, coffee or find cafe. So yeah, we enjoy when we travel too. So Gronya, just now Satyana say gila means crazy. So do you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how is Satyana? Many, uh, yeah. So Gronya, how many the bad lay uh, bad words that the uh, Satyana has uh, taught you how to you know Indonesian? <laughs> uh, Besides gila. I forget them. I haven't heard them in a while. Sometimes she says them on court. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, she's, what do you, you say, gila bang it <laughs> a lot. Gila bang it. <laughs> Some other stuff. So, Gronya, I mean, the, um, you know, who, uh, who is your dreaming partner if you want to play, like, you know, uh, in a mixed double or women double besides Satyana and your other partner? I mean, who is your dreaming partners if you can, you know, if you can choose? Mm. Mixed doubles, I don't know. Jung Soo Wei just wins all the time, so probably him. <laughs> <laughs> um, women's doubles, I don't know. Maybe like the tall Japanese one or somebody that can just like hit really hard. Oh, <laughs> whose name is it? Nagahara? No, it's a Nagahara. Masutomo. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, Tomo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, How about Satyana? <laughs> um, Mix double, oh ya. Mungkin aku pengennya partner Indonesia kali, biar ngomongnya lebih gampang. Oke. Okay. <laughs> With Jordan? Siapa? Apa? With Jordan? Um, sama Uto? Mungkin sama Mas Owi kali, kayaknya dia lebih oh, kalem gitu di lapangan. Oh. Udah pensiun. Well, oke. Okay. Uh, We want to give a chance to our other fan, Faris, here to ask a question. Uh, Faris, boleh, katanya Faris ada pertanyaan, jadi mungkin boleh ditanyakan ke kedua atlet ini. Pak, apa ya? Persaingan di dunia... Women Global ini apa sungguh berat untuk setiap sama background-nya. Sebab untuk di top 8 itu kan pertanyaannya sangat pesat gitu. Ya saya berharap kita fan fan lapan untuk Indonesia kan banyak fan untuk setiap sama background-nya ya. Itu berharap mas di top 10 di dunia kita berharap. Hmm. Okay, um, so I'll just translate a little bit. I guess like he's saying that you know right now at top eight it's very the competition is very high in a sense. And so how do you actually see for for the both of you or to Satyana or Gronya whoever wants to answer first? Uh, how do you see the competition in women's doubles nowadays? And also what are your plans? I guess to break into higher ranking. Maybe Tiana wants to answer first or Gronya? Okay. Um, yeah, it's definitely like, especially with the Olympic qualification period, it's a super competitive year and the top 10 are just like all so strong and consistent. So yeah, it's definitely for us is trying to break like consistently into the top 20 and get towards the top 10 and I think for us we just need to get a lot more match experience and uh, improve our like fitness and just yeah really kind of play more tournaments and be able to play against all different countries and styles and yeah I think from there then we can definitely have a chance at getting into the top 10 and beyond. How about Tiana do you want to answer or do you want to translate? You may. <laughs> sama aja sama kayak Gronya Gronya udah jawab <laughs> ya mereka mau uh, ikut mungkin perlu lebih banyak kompetisi dan lain-lain apalagi dengan sekarang kualifikasi ke uh, Olimpiade Tokyo juga gitu jadi uh, pasti mereka berusaha lebih juga supaya bisa terus nanti masuk ke top 10 gitu kurang lebih seperti itu Faris udah kejawab Yeah. Oh yeah, refresh my memory. I mean, have you, uh, Setiana and Gronya, been the uh, practice, you know, a while in the Cipayung? 
have you guys like you know been invited like play one or two times in Chipayun no? I think we did a couple of years ago. For with Gronya? Yeah, with Gronya. Two or three oh. days. Isn't is that, that, is that in the national team? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So how is it? <laughs> From what I remember, it was just like really long drills and the training was just really long and everyone just got tired and yeah, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> You just want to play, basically. You just want to play. I don't want any drill. I just want to play. <laughs> uh, no, it was also like playing, but it was just like everything's just so long and yeah, it was it was tiring. Like not much rest and so hot as well for us to just come straight over and then train so hard. But it's good because they just have so many sparring players. So it's you play against so many different styles and you can always change mm -hmm. partners. So it's it's really good. For sure. For sure. Um. You've been together for a few years, but I mean, you don't have to answer it. Like my favorite is when you guys are playing doubles, but what are your career highlights? Uh, it can be like you with someone else. It doesn't have to be with each other, but if you want to be safe, like, oh, it's the one with Gronya at this year, you may also. Uh, maybe Tia want, Tiana wants to answer first. Um, yeah, maybe Canada Open last year. Can we win Canada? What year we win um, Dutch Open Grand? 2016, I think. Yeah. How about the Grand? Yeah. Yeah, the same ones for me. The the Dutch Open was really <clears throat> good because we beat the Stovers, who were, I think, like top 10 or top 15 at the time, or they are now anyway. And yeah, it was a close match, and we were really happy to win that one. And then Last year's Canada Open was really exciting as well because we had some close games leading up to the final and um, like T was just coming back from injury so we weren't we didn't have like super high expectations and then we yeah won it which was really really nice as well. Well you you guys made the history at that time also because you guys are the first pair from Oceanian that won a, a BWF World Tour title. Um, were you guys nervous at that time? How did you feel when you got to the finals and then playing then? You go, Tim. Oh, yeah. Tiana? You go, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think by the time it comes to the finals, we're just like really excited and really happy to be there. And yeah, just want to do our best. I, um, like we're a little bit nervous, but mm. I think, yeah, at that point, we're just like, grateful to be in the final and just want to put on a good show. All right. So um, based on the current rankings, right, uh, I said that both of you now sit comfortably in a position to qualify for the Olympics 2020. So how do you feel about that? Uh, are you looking forward to play on your first Olympics, Tatiana? Yeah, I'm looking forward. <laughs> um. So, do you have any targets or expectation or anything you wish? Uh, I mean, for the Tokyo 2020. Um, yeah, I just wanna do um our best and then um mau tunjukin yang paling baik aja sih. Maksudnya mainnya ya, kalau bisa mainnya benar-benar keluar gitu. Um, mm. yang udah kita latih selama ini bisa keluar. How about Gronya? Do you have any targets or any with expectation for the Olympic Games next year? Um, yeah, it's our first one, so we won't really know too much what to expect. But yeah, hopefully we can do well. And I mean, a great result is always making it out of the pool. So being like making it to the quarterfinals and being the top two in your pool. So that would be an awesome goal to achieve that as well. Um, we want to actually read one of the questions from the fans but he didn't actually make it here. But he has a question that, what is your favorite tournament so far? Oh, maybe Gronya want to start? Um, I feel like you have something in mind already, but I don't know. I don't know, I like, I like a lot of tournaments now. I mean, I like the Canada one because we've won it twice and like the city, like it's nice weather and it's, it's nice city. Um, World Champs was pretty good as well in Switzerland. That was really nice to be in Basel. 
But I've heard that Japan and the French Open are the best ones, but we haven't played either of them. So I can't make a judgment on those yet. How about Tiana? Uh, yeah, I like Canada. And um, I like playing, uh, I love playing Denmark Open, but only play with that once. So yeah, when I go back and play in uh, Denmark. So is Canada, uh, is that your favorite uh, city as well? Or how do you think about Istoria? I think it's a question that Indonesian fan wants to know. How do you feel about playing in Istoria? Is that one of your favorite tournament, favorite city? Kiana, want to start? Um, it's, uh, <laughs> for me, it's, it's always good to play in Istoria, but um, it's always not easy, to be honest. To play in this style. <laughs> yeah. But um but I like the tournament and then like the feeling going back to Indonesia and then uh, meeting friends and family. But, yeah. How Are you guys you? planning to uh, play Indonesia Open in, in November? We haven't planned anything yet. <laughs> There's no <laughs> It's hard to plan because everything like this, everything just changes. But as soon as we can travel and it's possible, I think we'll play whichever ones we can. Yeah, I know there'll be a lot of the, I guess the uh, the guidelines of COVID nineteen. I believe so. Uh, you know, it, you know, it's, it won't be easy for everybody. I guess like the uh, recently, I mean, we just got the uh, SOP from the uh, super minister, and then it happened. I mean that. Even also, we, the organizer, have to get the PCR test. So, uh, meaning like, you know, meaning that all the free umpires, like, you know, all the players, doesn't matter where you're from. So everybody have to get PCR first before we can step in, so. Yeah. Mm. And the cost of PCR test not cheap, cheap either. I think cost you like what? I think the cost was like the uh, $100, $150 for, for each test. So. Do you guys have any players that you guys look up to when you guys started maybe right now? Gronya, do you have one? Um, we both kind of looked up to Christina Pedersen and Camille Yule when they played. They, When we went to Denmark, they like mentored us a little bit and did some sessions with us. And yeah, we used to have a Danish coach who was quite um, good friends with them. So um, yeah, we had a good relationship with them and they were also left right combinations. So they helped us with some tricks to catch the opponents off guard. <laughs> That's cool. How about Tiana? Is it the same or do you have a different one? Maybe another, uh, another player from Manado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I like uh, Christina, but I also like, uh, Liliana Nasir and Croatia. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, I think a lot of people like Lilian Natsir, like put them as someone that they look up to, you know, when they started playing, especially. Uh, do you do you have, well, you guys have a lot of fans. Uh, were there any interesting story that you guys have with them? Weird ones, funny ones, uh, like horror maybe, I don't know. Do you guys have any other group. stories? <laughs> Nothing comes to mind really, which is probably good. <laughs> no horror story. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes at tournaments, there's just like you see the same person waiting at the hotel, the same fan waiting there like every day, the whole day. You're like, what do you do? Why don't you have something else to do? They're just there all the time. But um, no, I mean, sometimes the Indo fans are a bit like, they'll like grab you or like, yeah. you off your shirt. <laughs> Or just like take, like just shove the camera in your face and then just go away like you're not a person. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. Okay. Um, the, uh, go ahead. Uh, I think some interesting thing that we know is also Gronya. You have been a commentator before. I think commenting some match in a BWF photo. So, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, I've just done a few matches with that. Um, yeah, it was an interesting experience. I've always been like the, I think, I think it's called the color commentator. So there's like the lead one mm -hmm. who 
who does all the like the big like wow kind of things and introduces and has all the statistics or whatever and then I just kind of say more the badminton technical side of things. so yeah I found it really interesting and um yeah it was a good experience to uh yeah have that different perspective bring that to the um, viewers and that kind of thing so I enjoyed that and I just get to watch badminton as well so <laughs> it's easy for me <laughs> You might have pay, you know, so you got to watch as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so probably the last question from us. Uh, can you describe your partner, each other, Satyana describing Gronya and Gronya describing Satyana, like in few words, but probably like how, how do they look like on court and are they different people of court? So Satyana, how do you describe Gronya? Uh, <laughs> Gronya? Gila banget. Gila banget. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, in, in what way? In what way? Seperti apa gilanya? Uh, enggak sih, gilanya. Um, I think she is very chill outside. Yeah. Like, semuanya oke-oke aja gitu. Kayak kita um, temennya ya, apa ya, kayak Um, pokoknya very relax gitu kita jarang sih nggak apa apa berantem atau gimana so kita berdo aku aku pikir gronya tuh very chill banget. Alright, apa gronya? Any any words for Setiana? Like um, nakal nakal. Okay, one second. I'm gonna go to uh, open the door quickly. Sorry, one second. Yeah. Yeah, so she said that you are a very good friend, but and and also very chill outside the court. Yeah. <laughs> um, should I wait for her to come back before I say mine, or just say it? <laughs> just say you know Depends before you want her show to up. So. <laughs> um, on court, like she's really like I just describe her as like super skillful. Like she has such good skill in her hand. Um, and then she's also. Yeah, probably crazy and really stubborn, like super stubborn. If she, if she has like something she wants to do or doesn't want to do, like just stick to that no matter what. And then, <laughs> coffee addict. <laughs> <laughs> just said that you're very stubborn, Satyana. <laughs> yeah. Is it is that true? Ah uh, yes. <laughs> okay, I think I I guess it's a very good uh, combination. I think. Uh, a lot of coaches say that I mean you actually shouldn't pair two of the similar person, but like two persons with a complementary like psychology and personality. So I think it's a, it's a very good. So I think uh, we come to the end of the session. So probably uh, two of our badminton fans would like to say some words. Kata kata penutup. Coba dari Faris. Ada kata kata penutup buat gas kita. Sesiapa sama guanya. Hi Faris. Terima kasih buat bagusnya sama maksudnya udah udah diberikan saya kesempatan untuk bareng uh, live ini uh, terima kasih banyak kami semua fans di Indonesia juga sangat mendukung hari badminton uh, kalian semoga tetap menjadi yang terbaik semakin membuat prestasinya semakin mendunia dan jangan lupa Nomor satu di dunia. Terima kasih. Okay, yeah. So Faris was happy to be able to talk to both of you. I think it's a very rare experience, and they always support you guys. They hope that you guys can be even better and better in the future. Yeah, and Dafa, you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, like Faris uh, said, thank you for this amazing opportunity. You know, it's very rare to be able to talk and have a casual time with two professional badminton athletes and I think I'd just like to say uh, we'll be rooting for you whatever you guys do in the future and hopefully one day I can get you guys live in a stadium watching from the stands. All right. Uh, Rudy, Mr. Rudy, you have anything to say for the last one? No, I think we're okay. We are good. Thank you for the time. Where is the uh, Gronia? Disappear? <laughs> yeah, so I think to end the session, we would like for both Satyana and Gonya to say the last few words uh, for the fans or for everyone who watched this video. Satyana, you have anything last to say? 
Um, makasih auto. banyak mas. <laughs> makasih banyak sama um, stay safe ya di Indonesia. Soalnya lagi banyak case and um, kita juga bantu. Cuma bisa bantu doa dari sini. Oke. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think we lost you just now. So uh, is It's come to the end, so we'd like you to say a few words for the fans and for everyone who watched this video. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for having us on this show. It was really good to interact with you guys and hopefully you you and the viewers learn some more about us and yeah, our story and what we're like, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much, Gronya and Satyana. Uh, all of us from Benito would like to... Uh, say that we are very grateful to have this opportunity and we like to apologize for any of the inconvenience or the disruption or the network issues so uh, and all the best for you guys stay safe uh, stay healthy and uh, all the best for the future thank you bye bye thank you thanks guys thank you Gonya thank you Stiana terima kasih banyak ya makasih semuanya